When you hear plastic railway sleepers, it sounds like a gimmick, like putting a kid's toy in a crucial piece of infrastructure. Too light, too soft, never going to work. But look closer and they're already in service, replacing timber in some of the hardest spots on the network. The real question isn't whether they will work, it's whether they can ever replace timber and concrete at scale. In this video, I'll take you through the three main types, their pros and cons, where they're being used, and whether they really are the future of track. Wood has been used for sleepers since the earliest railways, and concrete has become the standard material worldwide for its strength and stability. So why look for alternatives? Let's start with wood. A wooden sleeper has some great attributes. It's flexible as it can be turned, plugged, and redrilled. Its weight means it can be manually handled by a team of staff, but as a natural material, it decays over time, losing its ability to support rails and hold the gauge. The problem is worse in damp or enclosed environments like tunnels or level crossings. Preservatives once extended timber life, but harmful chemicals such as creosote have been restricted. That's cut off the supply of treated softwood and reduced the durability of what can now be sourced. Then there's the fact that not just any wood can be used for a sleeper. Hardwoods are preferred for use in sleepers, long bearers and timbers but the trees that provide this type of wood are slower growing and often found in tropical environments such as rainforests. That makes them hard to source, more expensive and raises big sustainability concerns. Concrete has been the main replacement, durable, stable and rock proof. Its weight makes handling more difficult but also gives the track extra stability. Yet concrete isn't suitable everywhere. It lacks timber's flexibility in tight spaces such as tunnels and bridges, and it cannot replace the longitudinal bearers used on timber bridges. From a carbon perspective, concrete also carries a heavy footprint due to energy-intensive cement production. The combination of timber's decline and concrete's limitations have created a gap that plastic and composite sleepers have emerged as a potential solution for. So what are these new materials, and how do they actually stack up? All plastic and composite sleepers share some clear advantages over traditional materials. They don't rot in damp conditions, they stay dimensionally stable without splitting or warping, and they've been shown to provide better electrical insulation than concrete, mainly because some don't contain any metal reinforcement. And as we touched on earlier, all three types are part of a move towards lower carbon and environmentally impacting track materials. But they're not all the same. Each of the three families of materials has its own strengths, limits, and approvals, and those differences matter when you're deciding where they can be used. Recycled Plastic Composite, or RPC. These are made by molding high-density recycled plastics into timber-like shapes so they can act as direct replacements. When it comes to pros, they have a strong sustainability credential. They're made from 100% recycled plastics and are fully recyclable at the end of their life. They're a simpler manufacturing process, generally a lower cost per unit than FFU, more on that later. They already hold full product acceptance for plain line and tunnel use across the UK. On the con side, it retains the same risk as timbers in terms of fastening pullout and screw hole creep risk. It's higher thermal expansion than reinforced types and it's less stiff than other hybrids, which means more movement in track under heavy traffic. Hybrid polymer sleepers. These use a polymer matrix with internal reinforcement, typically steel rods or glass fibers that give improved stiffness and long-term stability. The pros of hybrid polymer sleepers, the internal reinforcement improves stiffness and reduces creep compared with other types. Some design variants integrate the fastening system. Now, while they are under current network rail trials, there's also the suggestion of lower carbon and improved performance compared to other polymer-based designs. On the cons side, approval is variant specific. It is not as widely accepted for use as RPC. End-of-life recycling is made more complex due to the internal reinforcement than with RPC. As the new kid on the block, performance data is still more limited compared to RPC and FFU. Fiber reinforced foamed urethane, FFU. This combines rigid polyurethane foam with glass fibers to mimic timber's handling properties, but with far greater stability. When it comes to pros, FFU is the most proven in service. It's been used across the world since the 1980s, which gives it a longer track record than both of the other types. It's machinable like timber, so it can be cut and drilled with existing tooling. It's extremely dimensionally stable, less expansion and movement compared with the other types. Strong life cycle benefits, so it does have a higher upfront cost, but that's offset by a known long service life. It's also approved for specialist and demanding sites, such as bridges, S&C, and waybeams. On the cons, high purchase price 
compared to RPC or hybrids. This high cost typically restricts it to specialist applications, especially in the UK. However, FFU can and is used widely in all applications in other networks. And this brings me on to today's sponsor, Sekisui. Sekisui are the pioneers behind FFU synthetic sleepers, first developed in Japan in the 1980s and now used worldwide. In the UK, FFU has become the go-to solution for the most demanding applications. You'll find it in wheel timber replacements on bridges, in switch and crossing layouts, and in complex locations such as the long bearers at Newark Flat Crossing, one of the busiest and most intricate sites on the network. Over the past four decades, Sekisui's technology has moved from an innovative idea to a proven global standard. FFU is now installed in thousands of locations across the world, showing how engineered composites can deliver both performance and durability in railway track. To learn about Sekisu and the projects where FFU have been applied, I've included a link in the description and in the top right hand corner now. Plastic and composite sleepers are already being used, but where they appear depends heavily on the type. Recycled plastic composites are now being used as a timber substitute in locations where concrete isn't practical, especially in tunnels, areas with reduced sleeper end clearance and lower or lighter usage plain line sides. Their drop in nature makes them a straightforward option when timber needs to be removed from scope quickly. Hybrid polymer sleepers, still mainly seen at development and trial sites, network owners are testing different variants under live traffic to prove long-term stability and carbon claims. While they aren't yet widespread, the ongoing trials suggest they're positioned as a future low carbon option for broader deployment in plain line. FFU, widely adopted where timber long bearers and timbers were once the default. Bridges, switches and crossings, flat crossings and way beams or longitudinal beams. These are some of the most problematic locations for timber due to hidden rot and sourcing difficulties. FFU is becoming the go-to solution in these high stress, high risk applications, including tight radius curves. But putting them in the ground is only half the story. To really understand their potential, you need to know how they behave as a material. When looking at plastic and composite sleepers as a group, there are a few engineering properties that stand out. Weight and handling. Depending on the design, some types are lighter than timber, while others are as heavy or heavier. The extra weight can improve stability and track, but does make manual handling harder. Stiffness. The stiffness of most plastic and composite sleepers is closer to timber than concrete. This reduces ballast breakup compared with a concrete sleeper, but also allows more flexing in the track system. Fastenings. Fastening performance is a key consideration. Like timber, polymers can suffer pull-out creep over time if integrated housings aren't used. Thermal behaviour. Plastics expand more with temperature than timber or concrete. Reinforcement and design details help manage this, but thermal behaviour is a critical watch point for gauge stability and fastening tension. Electrical. Electrical insulation is generally better in plastics than the concrete, which is valuable for controlling stray currents in places like tunnels and electrified areas. Sustainability. All three material types carry a strong sustainability angle. RPC and hybrids make use of recycled plastics, and all the types offset any high carbon cost through their long service life. Reported reductions against timber and concrete range from between 70 to 90%. So they tick many boxes, but does that make them the future of track? If you want to be able to confidently identify the key track components, I've put together a free track component ID guide. It's a simple visual reference for you to keep to hand, and you can download it right through the link in the description or the top right hand corner now. Plastics and composite sleepers have moved beyond trials. They are now approved and in service. Most importantly, they're stepping in to replace timber in places where concrete just isn't practical. From tunnels and confined plain line sites to bridges, switches and crossings. But concrete still dominates the main lines and that isn't changing anytime soon. Instead, plastic and composites are carving out the roles where timber used to be. And in those niches, they're proving themselves as the future. So are they the future of track? In the spaces once filled by timber, yes. And with ongoing trials of hybrid designs, their role could grow yet further.